We're doing all right when we are apart. We always do the same dance, always on the fence, never making sense. I'm not gonna feel a thing tonight. I'm not gonna be the one tonight. Don't wanna hear anything that you say. Your love is a game that I don't wanna play. So don't say you need me when I walk away. You're making it worse. I'm not gonna feel a thing tonight. Not gonna feel a thing. I'm not gonna see your face tonight. Not gonna see your face. Don't wanna hear anything that you say. Your love is a game that I don't Mercedes Benz EQE 2023 review an expensive electric car. The Mercedes-Benz EQE sedan is a polarizing figure in the modern electric car market. From its forward-facing cabin to its technology-laden cabin, the EQE doesn't hide its electrification credentials, looking more like a space capsule than the E-Class with which it is nominally associated. However, there's a lot more to this mid-size Mercedes EV electric car than meets the eye. With a dual-motor powertrain pumping out 402 horsepower and 633 pound-feet of torque, the 2023 EQE 500 has plenty of power and great style, however, I couldn't help but be enthralled by its insistent futurism, with Speed Racer's four-wheel steering and synthwave interior lighting. Which keeps things interesting when the off-the-line push starts to get boring. Design. Like its EQS sibling, the EQE sedan proudly adopts Mercedes' one-bow stylistic language for electric cars. The low front and beefy tail are connected by a single brush stroke, the 59.5-inch roofline peaking just behind the driver to give the car a slightly rearward-leaning position. Unlike the EQS which has headlamps, the EQE uses separate headlamps and bracket-shaped daytime running lights which give it a bit of glamour. At the rear, the full-width taillight panel has circular lighting elements, like light bulbs. Beyond those details, deciding whether or not you like EQE is a matter of opinion I personally really enjoy the look of a mid-90s concept car. What's out of debate is how awesome the aero wheels of the AMG line are, embossed with billions of tiny Mercedes stars, these wheels are 20 inches and give the EQE 500 some excellent rolling stock. Inside, the EQE doesn't offer the MBUX hyperscreen, but the wood trim that appears on the dashboard is a fitting substitute. The upper dash and form-fitting window sills around the interior dive sharply, looking sharp and modern, and the minimalist AMG sport seats fit perfectly with the spaceship vibe. There are some gaps in the armor, however, the door pulls are common touch points, of course it's made of plastic that looks like aluminum, and the high dashboard hinders visibility due to the swooping front, otherwise the cabin EQE hits the right notes. Face tonight. I'm gonna see your face. Don't wanna hear anything that you say. Your love is a game that I don't wanna play. So cry all you want, but I still walk away. So many words, but you don't mean a thing. Comfort. Bombastic acceleration aside, the EQE 500 is a surprisingly smooth car to ride around town. Adaptive dampers are standard, and they do well in the gentlest of settings to even out bumps on bad pavement. 
The low 0.22 drag coefficient and door-mounted mirrors cut down on drafts, and despite the EQE of the frameless windows, there isn't much road noise. The aforementioned front seats offer a good amount of adjustment and are padded enough to be comfortable for long stints, and there's enough room for the driver and front passenger to get enough comfort. Unfortunately, the rear seats aren't all that accommodating, the high floor required by the 90.6 kWh battery takes up legroom and forces a slightly awkward, thigh-raised seating position. Technology. Unlike the EQS sedan, the EQE does not offer MBUX hyperscreen on its select sheet. However, unless you frequently have front seat passengers who need constant entertainment, you won't miss the glass panels that span across the dashboard. The 12.8-inch touchscreen gives me more than enough digital space, and as an added bonus, it's not partially obscured by the steering wheel as is the case with the hyperscreen's larger center screen. One of the options it brings is enhanced ambient lighting, a feature of the $850 exclusive trim package that also includes augmented reality navigation. Don't want to hear anything that you say, your love is a game that I don't want to play, so don't say you need me when I walk away. So many words but they don't mean a thing, you learn the lines between love and obscene, so don't say you need me cause we're not a thing. Performance and handling. Pushing a combined 402 horsepower and 633 pound-feet from a pair of electric motors, no subscription, the Mercedes-Benz EQE 500 is a staggering sensation in a straight line. A sprint of 60 miles per hour, 96 kilometers per hour, in 4.5 seconds doesn't sound all that impressive in the world of the Kia's 3.3 seconds, but Mercedes provided a gentle push from a stop to maintain control. Once up and running, the dual motors provide immense power, and the uphill acceleration is far more ferocious than any Mercedes not wearing the AMG badge. While the regenerative braking system is strong, bringing the car to a stop effortlessly, the brake pedal itself is hard to modulate, and harsh panic braking doesn't feel as strong as it should with the power it has. Blame it on its 5,424 pound curb weight and all-season tires. At least at lower speeds, it turns corners fairly well, thanks in part to the standard 10-degree rear axle steering. security. As usual, Mercedes-Benz charges extra for its acclaimed Level 2 Active Assist and Safety Features package. While active lane derailment prevention is standard, my tester's driver assistance package was the only way to get adaptive cruise control, active lane change, and stop-and-go functionality. Gonna be the one tonight. Price. The single-engined Mercedes-Benz EQE 350 Plus with 288 horsepower is priced starting at $76,050, but getting the EQE 500 requires a minimum investment of $87,050. However, even if you hold yourself back with the options, the Mercedes-Benz EQE is still a very expensive vehicle when you can get the faster, faster charging BMW i4 M50 with all available options for $84,370.
A fully loaded Tesla Model 3 performance is even cheaper at $71,240 including the coveted full self-driving option. Or, for about the same price as the EQE iDrive, I could also buy a more spacious Tesla Model S, which has a range of at least 375 miles and can reach a speed of 60 in 3.1 seconds. It's also quiet and refined, and its styling broadcasts its EV pretensions to the world. For me, this midsize EV is at least $10,000 too expensive to be a smart buy, so thankfully there are a few intangibles to help offset that. So many words but you don't mean a thing You blur the lines between love and obscene So I say you love me cause it's not a thing It's not a thing